The worst economic collapse in history is on its way. Be prepared. This is a chart of the 2008 financial crisis. Over the course of 500 days, the stock market dropped by more than 60%. Millions of people lost their jobs, their homes, and their life savings. It was the worst time for the global economy since the Great Depression. And this is the 2020 economic collapse so far. Over the course of just 21 days, the market has dropped by roughly 20%. The world has seemingly shut down and we just might be on the worst economic trajectory in history. Initially, when the disease had its first outbreak in China, it caused the Chinese government to shut down its manufacturing sector in order to help prevent the spread of the virus. Now, that wouldn't be a problem if one third of all products in the world weren't made in China. You see, China is the global supply chain of the world. So when China experiences delays in production, the entire world's economy experiences delays as well. So, because of this supply chain slowdown, we have seen many large companies experience a slowdown in their sales and revenue. And this makes sense, because if you don't have your product to sell, then you can't make any money. And here's an example. The car industry is very dependent on tools die and machinery in order to manufacture their cars. But each of these industries is experiencing one to three months delays because of the shutdown of the manufacturing sector. This means that car companies will not be able to launch their new annual vehicles on time, therefore missing out on billions of dollars worth of sales. And also because people are being asked to stay inside, be cautious and work from home if possible we have seen up to an 80% drop in automotive sales in some countries like China. And this effect keeps trickling down. If the car companies are seeing a drop in sales and revenue, then so will its suppliers. And if the suppliers see a drop in revenue, so will the raw industries that work with suppliers. And this effect radiates to all other companies that are connected to the automotive industry. And what happens when a company sees a drop in sales or revenue? Well, we tend to see things like layoffs or even bankruptcies. This would lead to a higher unemployment rate, which would lead to less purchases being made by consumers, which would lead to less sales being made by businesses. And this cycle continues until the economy hits a low point like the Great Recession or the Great Depression. And keep in mind, this is just the automotive industry. This drop in sales will apply to virtually every other industry in the world, except the toilet paper industry because that's actually manufactured in a bunch of different countries around the world. Yet sales have increased for some companies like KP Tissue by almost 50%. Anyways, typically from the time that we begin to see a slowdown in sales from worldwide companies to the time where we experience massive layoffs, defaults on loans and bankruptcies, it can be anywhere between 2 and 24 months. I mean, to think about this, the Great Recession began in December of 2007, but it took until September of 2008 in order for the worst parts of the recession to begin to be felt, and it was in March of 2009 when things were at their worst. That's a period of about 15 months in order for the recession to hit rock bottom. So what I'm trying to say here is that even though we may not experience an economic downturn in the next few weeks, we will almost certainly experience some sort of negative consequences in the next 24 months. So the Great Recession might not be the best comparison for what we're going through today because that was caused by a combination of banks, insurance companies, and investors that created massive flaws in the financial system. The most comparable economic downturn to the one that we are seeing today, it was probably the recession of 2001, except the one that we're going through today is on a much larger scale. You see, in 2001, there was a rapid drop in stock prices. After a half decade long bull market, there was also a crisis that slowed down the world's economy, which was 9-11 and there was a temporary ban on air travel in many countries throughout the world. But again, the thing is that what we're seeing today is much more extreme than what we saw back then, because today we are seeing many more negative economic indicators. 
For example, today, consumer debt is at a higher level than it was during their session of even 2008, meaning that any economic downturn might cause people to miss payments on their debt and in turn create massive losses for lenders, similar to what happened in 2008. Today, stock market volatility, which is usually a sign of investors being uncertain about an incoming economic collapse, is actually at the exact same level as it was right before the 2008 recession, which was extremely high. There are also two giant industries right now, and the airlines and the cruise lines that are actually on the brink of bankruptcy, and no one is really talking about this. In fact, I'm almost certain that if people aren't able to travel again in the next few weeks, or a couple of months, then we will see at least one major airline go bankrupt or get bailed out. In fact, it might even be all of them. And what is strange that this might be one of the only bailouts that I have 100% agreed with because it's due to an unpredictable change in traveling laws and regulations and not due to the incompetence of the industry. The airline industry is not the only industry getting hit right now. Of course, you've probably heard about a lot of other shutdowns like the businesses that involve large gatherings of groups of people. These are the businesses like the NBA, concerts, comedy shows, conferences, and much more. And even though each one of these businesses is much smaller than some of the bigger industries that we've already talked about, having all of these industries take a hit at the same time will begin to add up in ways that you don't think about. I mean, for example, have you thought about the economic impact of shutting down the NBA? You might think that the only people who will get hurt are the players, the owners, maybe the broadcasters, but that isn't true because the people that will be most affected are the arena workers who are expecting to have a stable weekly paycheck, but all of a sudden have no source of income. And yes, there's even different kinds of companies that don't draw in large or dense crowds that are still shutting down for several weeks at a time. The best two examples are Nike and Apple, who have shut down all of their stores in hopes to stop the spread of the virus throughout the world. And even though these are big companies that will be able to get through the shutdown while still being able to pay all of its workers, there are still many businesses we're shutting down temporarily or who are limiting store hours who will be unable to pay their hourly workers their expected wage. And what about the stores and small businesses that do keep their doors open during this time? Well, this early data is pretty terrifying. Let's take the restaurant business for example. There are apps like Resi and Open Table, which are used to book tables at restaurants. And they're reporting that covers are down between 30 to 65% in areas like New York and Washington. So, all of these points represent the case for an incoming recession, and there's a ton of other points that are tough to quantify, such as businesses losing productivity by having people work from home, there was a sharp drop in oil prices recently, and there's a ton of other economic indicators that signal a really bad economy coming in the future. But this does not mean that a horrible recession is a for sure thing. You see, there are ways to at least mitigate some of the short-term consequences of a recession. For example, one action that several countries have done, like Canada and the United States, is that they have set up a loan program where small business owners are able to take out interest-free loans in hopes to prevent their businesses from shutting down during the next 6 to 12 months. Another thing is, as mentioned earlier, using taxpayer money to help bail out core infrastructure companies such as airlines might help prevent large companies from going bankrupt. The one thing that can't be prevented is the slowdown of the economy that we have already experienced in the last few weeks, and this will likely continue for the foreseeable future. You see, governmental action can only get you so far during a recession. At the end of the day, the only real way that we can prevent or minimize this recession is to have life return well back to normal for the average person. But that might not happen for quite a while, so buckle up, be prepared, because we might be in for a tough one.
Hit the like button and share this video to all your friends. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos.